So today we're going to be tasting three different wines. Um, we're going to be tasting our 2017 Helix Cab Franc, uh, our 2016 Merlot XM, which is kind of a new little fun project that we have going on. XM stands for extended maturation. So spent a little extra time in the barrel. And we're also going to be tasting our 2014 Runninger Chima. Um, with us tonight, uh, moderating this and looking after all of us and uh, making sure that your questions get to us is Abby Clark. Abby is our um, marketing director here. And uh, um, Abby, any words of marketing and any announcements that you want to make? And uh, Yeah, let's uh, start off with that Cabernet Franc. All right. Yeah. Who? Well, Cabernet Franc, you know, Cabernet Franc is, it is a wonderful, wonderful grape. Um, a lot of people will refer to it as, oh, kind of more of the gentler Bordeaux. Um, it's similar to Cab in a lot of respects and, and, and Merlot, um, and, uh, but it's softer structure, softer tannin. Uh, depending on where it's grown in cooler climates, you'll find that it has a little more acidity and uh, sometimes a little more, uh, some pepper notes to it in cooler spots. Um, like in the Loire, it has a big home in the Loire Valley. Um, but in Bordeaux, um, it can, in the right vintages anyway, it can be very pronounced. Uh, have wonderful, I think, gorgeous, sumptuous mouthfeel. Um, and in the warmer years, uh, uh, can provide some really beautiful upfront fruit. Uh, you see it, you know, it's blend, you find it a lot in the right bank of Bordeaux, um, where Merlot and Petrus and uh, the famous uh, Pomerols and Saint Emilians, you'll find it is uh, very important. Uh, um, uh, constituent in those uh, blends there in the right bank. And uh, here in Washington, um, you know, it does very well. And the Walla Walla Valley does extremely well here uh, because we do get those uh, consistently warm vintages. And uh, one thing that we do have to be careful of is crop load on Merlot. Merlot does like to, has a propensity to grow anyway. Um, and uh, it sometimes can have a little green uh, pepper, bell pepper type aspect to it. What's interesting about that is it's kind of like Carmenere, Cabernet Sauvignon, you, you'll see it too. Um, those are methoxyperazines that uh, uh, cause that flavor. Uh, but interesting, it's actually kind of a natural insecticide for the plant too. But for our purposes, we like to avoid avoid that. Sorry, that's my phone. Um, I'll go ahead and mute that just in case. Um, there we go. But uh, it can be by itself a, a very gorgeous grape. And in this case, uh, for the 2017 vintage, it is just it is just that. Um, this is 100% uh, Merlot from Weinbau uh, Vineyard, which is at the east end of the Waluk Slope. Um, it's about oh, an hour and a half drive from our winery here. And the Waluk Slope uh, can be one of the warmest growing regions in Washington State. However, the east end side or east end of the slope um, is uh, a bit cooler anyway. Um, and I think some of that's because if you've been involved with some of our earlier discussions uh, comparing Waluk Slope with the Royal Slope, Royal Slope is directly north of um, the Waluk Slope, um, it's uh, contiguous to it. It's separated. The Waluk and Royal Slopes are separated by the Saddle uh, Mountains, Saddleback Mountains. And um, at the east end, um, what happens is, is that I think the cooler air that comes out of Snoqualmie Pass and hits the Royal Slope, the Royal Slope is generally uh, a little bit cooler than Waluk Slope. And at the east end, I believe that some of those airs are, the, the Saddle Mountains are a little lower there and the air is able to come up and around and, and cool that area off just a little bit more. So, um, but what's really important 
that fruit there um, at Weinbau was just up there yesterday looking at the cab frog. And gosh, for the life of me, it just, every year, it just wants to hang and hang and hang. You think, okay, it's going to be ready. So go up there and you think, Cap Franc, we should be harvesting it by now, but not at this vineyard. And um, so um, I crushed our samples, ran samples, and it, it just needs to develop more color. So it's still about another um, 10 days away. I actually am forecasting for harvesting this a week from this Saturday. So, um, but uh, uh, we get this real plush, luscious mouthfeel out of this. and. As long as we don't overcrop it there, um, boy, I tell you, wine bow, wine bow, I should say, um, has, uh, I think, some of the best cab franc, probably just about the best cab franc anyway in Washington state consistently. Um, when you look at the cab francs uh, that are produced in the state, uh, boy, the, the best ones, um, vintage after vintage, uh, You'll see many of them anyway with uh, uh, coming from Winebow uh, Vineyard, Winebow Cash. Sorry, our distributor in Seattle is Winebow. <laughs> so I keep wanting to say Winebow, but it's Winebow. And uh, so, but uh, anyway, it is, it is a wonderful, wonderful uh, vineyard. Miguel up there, the vineyard manager, does a fantastic job and uh, really, really love it. Um, boy, so um, sometimes Cap Franc, it, you know, the berries can be actually uh, pretty dark, um, and uh, uh, but it's a little thinner skin than Cabernet Sauvignon, and uh, but uh, so sometimes uh, like these rains and stuff. Uh, thank God it's over there in Waluke Slope because it really didn't get touched much by this rain. And um, and not only that, the architecture of the clusters are pretty wide open this year. The berries aren't real tight together. So um, we can get good airflow and um, drying capacity anyway um, up there. So I don't, don't have to worry so much about it. Um, but anyway, this beautiful nose on this. Gosh, when I get first put my nose in there, I get this really nice um, kind of floral fragrant kind of potpourri. At one time I was getting a little bit of clover um, in it. I'm not getting that so much today. Um, and I think that's because sometimes the clover aspect, um, there's certain yeasts anyway that will uh, impart a little clover for a while, but after a while that will um, um, dissipate. But uh, yeah, I'm not getting, the clover so much right now but uh any like the um yeah you get a little strawberry raspberry jam going on there and um red currants so red currant raisins and you know i also get some really um beautiful um Ah, oh, gosh, I just want to say light, light spice in there, but blended with some really beautiful um, herbs and stuff too. Just a uh, light herbal note on it. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's fun. What, what makes it fun for me is, is more of the, the raspberry aspect of it in the, the floral potpourri, which I find real interesting in the, in the nose. Um, By the way, let me show you this beautiful bottle. There you go. So there you are, 2017 Helix Cabernet Franc from Weinbau Vineyard. So, and Weinbau, by the way, is spelled W-E-I-N-B-A-U. And um, so, but yeah, um, on the palate, um, we're getting real nice, uh, soft, round, uh, uh, tannins on it. Uh, so again, it's got this plush lusciousness to it. A um, lot, of, lot of red plum. And um, some cherry going on and uh, red currant. And um, really from my uh, hiking days anyway, I get um, a little bit of um, strawberry fruit leather. So uh, um, 
it's uh yeah it's, it's anyway just some fun fun things going on in there so i'm not getting any of that methoxypyrazine notes in this uh that in other words that bell pepper aspect to it or any pepperiness and uh so um and just by the mouthfeel and the nice dark fruit um, uh, flavors in this, you tell that it was a, a really nice vintage for Cabernet Franc. Boy, you can tell that the sun's starting to get down low there. <laughs> I have my office window here in front of me, so getting a little bit of that helping glow here on the face. So hopefully it makes me look a little more handsome. Yeah, I can use all the help I can get. All right, so, man, and you know, I really like the acid in this too. It's just a re really balanced, just beautiful all around um, uh, wine. You know, one thing that I really like with with this this wine with it is actually, this is a great uh, wine for salmon too. So you have salmon with some, a real beautiful reduction sauce or something, fruit reduction sauce you put with it. Um, man, oh man, that's, that's one of my favorites with the Cap Franc. So there you have it on Cap Franc. And I tell you, this is, it's a beautiful Cap Franc. So, man. All right. Yeah, the, the cherry, the finish, you know, it just has a little, the cherry and strawberry um, just really kind of prolonged anyway. Nice, nice long finish. Okay, well, we're going to move on. Question, Chuck. Um, okay. Uh, what are good uh, food pairings with? Well, like I say, I was saying um, the um, uh, uh, salmon, we, like say with a fruit reduction, um, but also uh, Cap Franc will go um, sometimes nicely, sometimes the cooler Cap Francs will um, go nicely with barbecue um and uh so um that's i like to do that and sometimes actually with some um uh gosh what am i trying to think um sometimes i also like to pull it out actually with some um like beet salad and stuff too is i find is a lot of fun with it um so i'm just trying to think of some more you know traditional things um but um Tomato dishes goes really, really well with. And um, as far as um, um, meats go, um, it can, it goes, it goes, as long as, I like it with pork, as long as you don't uh, put too heavy of a spice rub on it, um, you know, gentle herb rub, like with pork tenderloin or something like that. Um, but uh, not not too heavy on on the uh, spice aspect of it. So uh, you get more of floral herbs on it. It's really 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 beautiful with it. So okay, and um, so we have it's fun here with the, our next wine is the 2016 um, Merlot XM. Here you go, Mike. Well, there we go. So XM stands for extended maturation. So um, this was in the barrel instead of uh, close to two years. Um, it was actually in the barrel uh, for nearly four years anyway. Um, so we thought we'd just have some fun with it. Uh, this guy actually has quite the pedigree anyway of vineyards. Uh, we, we have Stillwater Creek Vineyard in here. There's um, Sagemore Bacchus Vineyard, which is uh, Weinbau, by the way, is a sage is owned by Sagemore also. Sagemore is located uh, to the south of Weinbau. It's about, oh, 15, 20 miles north of Pasco, Washington. Pasco is one of the Tri-Cities on the Columbia River. Um, which is just west of the confluence of the Snake River and the Columbia Rivers is where Tri-Cities is located. Um, there's Pepper Bridge Vineyard here in Walla Walla, uh, Seven Hills Vineyard, and also XL Vineyard, all those. So Pepper Bridge, 
Seven Hills and XL, those three are uh, Walla Walla Valley. So it's a nice blend of um, the Columbia Valley and Walla Walla Valley in this one. And um, so 2016, uh, the spring, it was warm. It was a uh, pretty hot spring actually. And the summer was, was very warm. It wasn't as warm as this year where uh, we didn't have all the, uh, as, nearly as many triple digit days um, that's, that summer. But um, 2016 was medium sized berries um, and average yields and uh, September cooled off nicely. So uh, we got some good hang time out of the, the fruit. And uh, Merlot is a earlier ripener out of uh, the Bordeaux. So it's actually just about the earliest. Um, it, or it ripens uh, before Cap Franc, it ripens before Cabernet Sauvignon. Cap Franc generally ripens about a week or so before uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. And uh, just depending on the vineyard, I've seen um, uh, Cab, Cabernet Sauvignon come in uh, anywhere from a week to maybe even close to a month after Merlot. So that kind of gives you the, the general uh, spectrum or window anyway of, of harvesting for those. Um, but, oh, I, you know what? I was going to say back to Cab Franc real quick too. Just kind of a little interesting fact that just popped in my mind. Cab Franc is also um, one of the parents of quite a few grapes that uh, you we talk about here tonight, two of them. Uh, it's a parent of Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, so it marries up with Sauvignon Blanc to create Cabernet Sauvignon. So Cab Franc plus Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, Merlot um, is uh, uh, Cabernet Franc, is the parents are Cabernet Franc. And this one's always hard for me to pronounce, but Magdalene Noir Charantes. Um, it's an obscure uh, grape um, in France. And uh, so, they team up to uh, make Merlot. The other one is Carmenere. So uh, uh, Cab Franc is also the parent of, uh, one of the parents of Carmenere. So interesting fact. So we owe a lot to, to Cabernet Franc. So let's be thankful for Cabernet Franc. So I'm back onto the 2016 Helix though. Um, the XM in like say it's a, a fun project and so leaving it in the barrel uh, was fun. Uh, I didn't get overwhelmed by uh, uh, extra oak time. It helped uh, build the uh, mouthfeel a little more, gives it, gave it a little bit more tannin, um, tiny bit more oak, a little slightly more chewy um, mouthfeel to it and uh, so, uh, but uh, it's, I think it uh, helped, it's made the wine a little more complex too. So uh, a, lot, a lot of things going on in there. Um, so I'm gonna freshen up my glass here. I kind of pre-poured these for some reason tonight, but uh, it's always nice to freshen it up a little bit, especially when I wanna take a good nose hit of it. No oh, man, you missed it. But do you mind saying what XM stands for? And yeah, what it, the it, project. Sure, I can say it again. It stands XM stands for extended maturation. So that means leaving it in the barrel for extra time. And so typically our Merlot will leave in the barrel for uh, just about two years, just under two years, anywhere from eighteen months to twenty four months. Um, and so this particular wine we left in the barrel uh, for uh, near close to four years anyway. So it's uh, probably, um, oh gosh, probably about 45, 46 months in the barrel. And uh, so what I get out of the, out of the nose, get some really nice um, dark fruit layers going on in here. Uh, get some uh, baked plum along with uh, dark cherry and a uh, little boysenberry reduction sauce, kind of reduction going on. You can tell I like to, <laughs> I like to make uh, reduction uh, sauces and a lot. I love the or fruit reduction sauces. And so, um, so it reminds me, I, you know, oftentimes uh, get that 
get that uh, intense mature fruit from it. Um, a little bit of floral notes in there. Again, a little um, uh, violet is the main thing, violet and a little potpourri kind of dried flower aspect going on there. Um, and at certain times, I don't get it all the time, but at uh, different times, I'll get a little bit of um, hints of chocolate or vanilla going on in there. And that stands to be uh, to reason from the extended barrel maturation. Uh, the, the chocolate uh, can come from either the fruit or, or the barrels. Um, uh, the toast of the, of the barrel can sometimes impart a little bit of uh, hints of chocolate uh, aspect to it. Um, but Merlot here in the Walla Walla Valley um, has, uh, it's one of the cool things about it. Um, uh, it often throws a little bit of uh, cocoa or light chocolate kind of uh, aspect to it. And I think it's uh, relatively unique to Walla Walla Merlot, but uh, it's really, really beautiful. So Chuck, what, um, what was our oak program on this wine? This guy was 100% um, American oak on this, and uh, it's 50% new. So I like American oak on Merlot. Typically, like for the Reininger Merlot, we'll have about 60% American, 60 to 70% American, and 30 to 40% French. That will be a typical. Um, the reason being, I American oak has um, less tannin, if you will, than, um, well, not if you will, it does. It has, uh, imparts less tannin and softer tannins uh, to the wine than French oak does. And um, so uh, it has a little bit more brown spice characteristic to, to the oak also. And to me, I really love the way that that melds with that uh, kind of that cocoa chocolatey aspect that I was telling you about that we find in in uh, the Walla Walla Valley Merlot. So um, I really like it uh, for the mouthfeel aspect and uh, uh, just helps deliver a very nice softer um, palate anyway. And also like say those brown spices that uh, we'll often find with it. So. Complements it very well, I believe. So, and you know, the amount of oak is dependent on um, how intense the fruit is. And so how much extract we can get from the fruit. So the more extract we can get out of the fruit, um, then uh, the more oak we can put on there. The whole name of the game for us is um, uh, not overpower the varietal character. We always want the varietal uh, to come through in our wine. So, uh, the varietal characteristics important. So, um, you know, some wines we can put 100% new oak, some wines uh, we don't put any new oak on uh, for that reason. But Merlot, somewhere in between. Some years it's only maybe eight or 10%, other vintages uh, we can put a lot more, such as the 50% here. So, but again, um, in the flavors, Mm, and I say getting that dark fruit, uh, kind of boysenberry plum going on, uh, black cherry. And again, it's got a little chewiness to it. Um, today, I'm getting something a little um, new that I haven't noticed. I get a hint of um, anise going on in there. So kind of a little hint of uh, licorice. Um, but again, I got some vanilla, a little caramel going on. And um, it's um, just kind of lingering through there. So uh, and they also get a little hint of, um, like say that cocoa, some a little more cocoa than chocolate. Um, you know, and uh, get a little hint of uh, roasted coffee bean too. So again, that, that comes from the oak toasting. Mm. Man, boy, the colors, I'm looking to the west and 
seeing the fading colors of the sunset here in the clouds is just absolutely gorgeous. The, the blues, the peaches, a little bit of purple and stuff. It's gorgeous. So the lighting here in Walla Walla Valley at sunrise and sunset is just spectacular. So if you're, if you're not from around here and you get a chance to be up early in the morning, uh, you know, those are best times because the sun gets low and so you can really see the contours of the valley and uh, the contrast, the lighting, the light contrast throughout the valley. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So it makes for spectacular photographs. But um, anyway, um, yeah, it has the tannins in here, really fine structured tannins. And uh, so I don't know if it's quite as uh, velvety as the uh, Cabernet Franc, because it has this, but it has this real soft but fine, fine uh, tannin structure to it. And the acid, I think, is uh, is real nice on it too. So, absolutely, absolutely a wonderful, wonderful Merlot. So, if you want some Merlot with a little more age in it, out of the gate, and you know what. Actually, it's fun. This just a couple of nights ago um, is actually this weekend. Uh, some friends from uh, Gig Harbor were on their way down to Arizona, and so they spent the night with us. Some longtime friends of ours, and um, uh, I broke out a bottle of 1997 Reininger Merlot. Is our very first vintage, and I was really, I was very, very happy. It was really complex. Um, I expect it's been about a year, year and a half, maybe since I've had that wine. And um, I was expecting it to um, have uh, grown a little older anyway, since the last time I saw it. And I thought that maybe it might be getting towards the end. But uh, um, it is something if you have any in your cellar and it's been cellared well, by all means, man, uh, drink it. Um, I'm going to be I have probably about a half a case left of it in my cellar and uh, it's time I'm not going to uh, let it age any longer so in the next couple months I'm sure it's all going to be gone so and in the next two or three months but uh, really really loved it so so that gives you an idea how long Merlot can last um, I think uh, the 97 Merlot it's at the end of uh, I think it's maturation for me. I don't really care to see it age much more because I think it's going to lose more than it's going to have to offer, but it's still very complex and uh, doing, doing very well. So, so what's that, you know, 24 years anyway. Of, uh, so Merlot does age. It's not just three or four years and out. <laughs> so uh, it can get a bad rap sometimes. And remember, I was talking about uh, San Emilion and Pomerol and some of those wines. I mean, they'll last 80 years, 100 years. So and they're mostly Merlot. Sorry, I had to have just a little bit more of that. Yeah, that's good. Really beautiful um, oak finish just kind of runs right on through it all. So gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous wine. So do we have any questions on the, <laughs> feeling like a, a college professor here. So um, anyway, if you have any thoughts or anything on, uh, on the XM, does anybody have the XM with them tonight? Anybody drinking it? All right, we got some, the Czar Cellar. All right, there we go. All right, Corman's, this is great. So. Fantastic. All right. Well, you know, I'm really excited about this one too. This next one. We are on to our 2014 Reininger Chima. So if any of you um, haven't seen our new label yet, um, this is part of it. This is one iteration of it. Uh, the focus of our new label or what we call these the Diamond Mountains, if you will, or Delta Mountains and uh, on the Reininger label. And we can uh, manipulate those to make different shapes. So Chima means summit or peak in Italian, which is appropriate for this wine, seeing how it's 50% Sangiovese and 50% Bordeaux wines. 
and uh, um, I should say fruit. And uh, so anyway, Chima of Lexi means summit or peak and it pays homage to Mount Rainier. So that's kind of actually a little abstract image of Mount Rainier. So you can see the little crater at the top of the mountain, Columbia Crest there. And over here on this side, you can see Little Tahoma. Tahoma is the indigenous people's name for Mount Rainier. And uh, so that's Little Tahoma. And we do have a surprise this year too. We have a little sister wine to this called Tahoma coming out. But uh, maybe I shouldn't say anything about that yet. Surprise her. Abby, Abby's going to get mad at me later on for spilling the beans on Tahoma. <laughs> Feel free to talk about it. Emails are going to be going out November 1st about it. So, all right. Heads up. Well, it too has the, the same label, except it's white instead of black, but it has that the Mount Rainier, abstract representation of Mount Rainier on that. So Chima, man, what's special about Chima? Everything special about Chima. This is just one of the most fun wines for us to make here. Um, and, uh, you know, we kind of accidentally fell into it because Sangiovese wasn't anywhere on our radar when we first started making it uh, at Chima in 1999. Uh, we were going to be Bordeaux-centric. Uh, we were actually making our first non-Bordeaux wine in uh, 99, which was some Syrah. And the San Giovese fell in my lap one night as we were crushing the Syrah. I had no idea I wasn't, what to do with it. I wasn't a student of San Giovese, um, what to do with it, how to uh, make wine with it. So it was just going by Braille. And uh, I we crushed it to put it to barrel and well, can't forget about the fermenting that part. Uh, but, uh, and it just didn't excite me. It didn't do anything for me, but I'll tell you um, about uh, four months later or so that 99 uh, San Giovese really started turning into something nice after gorgeous, beautiful after being in the barrel for about four months. So um, how it evolves uh, really blew my mind. And, so um, the question then was what to do with it. So I decided to blend it with Bordeaux, some Bordeaux varietals. And the reason for that is because uh, Super Tuscans, they're uh, Sangiovese, uh, usually blended with uh, Bordeaux varietals. Now a Super Tuscan can be blended with anything non-Italian. Uh, and sometimes you don't have to have any Sangiovese in it too. So it's a very broad category now. But um, anyway, the art tradition here is um, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 50% Sangiovese, 50% Bordeaux varietals. And uh, we barrel age it for six years, close to six years in barrel. So again, that's the XM, extended barrel maturation. And um, so uh, we've been doing that since 1999. There was no 2000 because it took a while to figure this whole process out. But um, so it's inspired by Super Tuscans and Brunello di Montecino where they'll um, typically have that barrel. Uh, Brunello di Montecino is 100% Sangiovese, the, the Reserva. Um, and, but it's typically barrel age for five years or so. Um, so, uh, anyway, so that's where we got the, this inspiration for the Reininger Chima. So, and it's always one of our favorites to, uh, work with. So, um, and our customers always look so forward to it. So let's talk a little bit about this guy. The nose, man, oh man, you know, one of the first things sticks out in my mind, a little black cherry brandy, kind of um, dark Kirsch kind of thing going on and a little bit of fig and um, black raspberry, little Asian spice going on. Mm. Man, again, a, a hint of violets going on, cocoa, little hazelnut. You know, sometimes in the nose too, usually as, when this, as this wine ages, we'll get a little more tobacco in it. Some reason for tonight, um, I'm beginning to uh, uh, 
um, I, I'm not sure if it's fatigue or what, but um, anyway, I'm not picking up the tobacco that I typically find in this. Um, but I am also, I'm getting, I'm beginning to get a little umami in here too. So, um, you know, umami, we actually only, we taste bitter, sweet, um, sour, um, gosh, what, what's the fourth? Oh, salt. Those are the things that we taste with our tongue and also umami is kind of savory, um, aspect anyway. Those are the five things that our tongue actually uh, perceive. Everything else we actually we perceive in our olfactory. So it's the volatiles rising from our palate up through our nasal cavity to our olfactory. And um, that's where we perceive all the fruit and uh, everything else except for those five uh, uh, tastes that we get on the tongue. So I'm starting to get a little more uh, umami out of this. And uh, so, um, which is, which we typically see with, with age on it. And uh, so, so, and I expect we'll see more tobacco in, in this wine too, as it ages. And that's really typical too of San, of Sangiovese as it ages. And uh, so I've been really, really pleased over the years with the varietal character um, that, this, that this wine uh, displays. It ages like, um, a typical super Tuscan, like a lot of super Tuscans do. So, yeah. Anyway, if you leave this open for a while too, one thing that I, all these wonderful things that would becomes uh, dominant uh, after it's been open, say for an hour or so, is the nose, the black cherry uh, in it seems to uh, take over in it, so. Mm. Man, black raspberry, um, black cherry, berry, black currant, just like I say, black fruits, hint of chambord, chambord is a black um, raspberry liqueur, has a few spices in the chambord. If you haven't been to chambord in France, in the Loire Valley, oh gosh, one of the most incredible chateaus you'll ever experience. Um, beautiful, beautiful places. Hunting ground, I believe, for so Louis the, I think it was the 16th. Can't remember. It was a long time ago, college when I went there, <clears throat> taking a break, semester break from school, and went and traveled around Europe for about three and a half months. But uh, Chambord, gosh, it just sticks out in my mind. So, anyway, so I get a little Chambord in there too. So, and uh, at times I get, um, in the finish, I'll just get a hint of just a real fine, fine layer of maybe a little uh, charred oak going on in the finish in it too. So, but real velvety texture, uh, the acid in here just seemed really focused and uh, just a real, real gorgeous wine and uh, like I say, this is uh, just one of the real special things that we do here at Reininger Winery, the Tima. And uh, uh, if, you know, wine club members, man, you're really lucky because that's where it usually all goes to, is uh, to wine club members. So, uh, yeah. So we have three fantastic wines here, man. This is, oh gosh, man, I am just so excited about all of these wines. I, you know, again, like how excited I am about the uh, these last two vintages here, um, but I'm just real stoked about these wines too. They're they're extremely high quality wines, as I'm really proud of them and uh, proud of what our team has done here with it. And uh, not only with the wine making aspect, but uh, what the marketing team has done with our relatively new Helix labels and the Reininger labels. Um, it's just all, all real beautiful, fun stuff that we're doing. So Yahoo, there's my quick uh, synopsis and taste of uh, three wonderful wines that we do here at Reininger and Helix Wines. So, um, 